Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're doing out there in the concrete world, both academic and industry. Here, we're going to talk to you today about our concrete business cards that we use. We've had a lot of questions about it today, and we're going to address that today. Here's our concrete business card mold. All secrets out there, these are repurposed candy molds. And really, the, the material that we're using here is plastic. It's very thin plastic. They're very inexpensive, easy to make once you get the whole process set up, and fast to get to your front doorstep so you can start making some business cards. So one of the questions that we often get is, how do we design these things? And it's really easy. Um, we contact a candy supplier who makes these molds for Three Musketeers or your mints or your holiday chocolates for Christmas or Easter. Then what we do is we give them this logo with our information that we want at the bottom. Now, we go through a lot of iterations with three-dimensional or three-dimensional, three-dimensional. English is my first language. Three-dimensional uh, models before we pick out the type that we like. Now please, bear in mind that you can only fit so much information on these business cards. And the unfortunate reality, folks, is once you start including way too much information, you start losing that pretty, pretty lettering. So as you can see, we put a limited amount of information on there. Despite that, people still love these things. But let's go ahead and talk about how we use them. So what we normally do to get this type of end product is create a very fluid mix. The end result is this right here. We want to get a nice fluid paste that will not only go into the mix with or into the mold without any consolidation, but when we pop it out, it comes out very easy. And as you can see, we have that nice lettering in there. We have the nice detail. I mean, it really is just a beautiful card. Now, what I'm not going to share with you today is the glow in the dark mix. That is a proprietary mix, but we do have other videos where we go over how to make your own glow in the dark concrete grout. All right, so let's get into making these cards. So what I'm going to use today is a very simple, neat cement paste. I've got 90 grams of my type 1, 2 ordinary Portland cement. And then I've got 45 milliliters of water. So I'm going to add a little bit at a time. And of course, you can make your mixes fancier if you want to. And of course, we do the same. But for today's show and tell, let's just make it simple. Make sure it's creamy and dreamy and easy to get into the mold. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, sorry, got a little. Ah, got to get that little bit. There we go. Okay, so right now, we're really not at that creamy and dreaminess that we want. It's a little bit too sticky right there, so I'm gonna add just a skosh, a modicum, if you will, of water to get me to the fluidity that I want. And again, when you're making this at home, you can always use additives, admixtures to help not only get you to that fluidity, but also to that time of set that you're looking for. And that's exactly what we do here. We rarely do a neat cement paste like this. We normally do um, something that's got a lot of bells and whistles in it, um, not only to help us get that fluidity that we want, but also kill air to put the glow in the dark in there for using that, but also uh, to create that, um, that nice look to it without cracking or flaking. And normally I'm a little bit more fluid than this, so I could do that on the next mix. And that really should be enough. So you see, I'm not filling it up over the top. Oh, and I'm making a mess over here. All right, and then you can go back and consolidate it. If you'd like, especially if it's a little bit stiff like this one is. And once you let those air bubbles come out, you're good to go. That's one made. And then what I want to do with that is just allow it to sit for a little bit to set up before I put my plastic sheeting over it. And uh, once it gets to that point, plastic sheeting on, we'll have no problem. And then go ahead and allow that to cure. So this one I'm going to make a little bit more fluid. 
same process. I have my 90 grams of that white Portland cement. Ah, gotta get those clumps out of there. You know, that's the problem with not using those bells and whistles, those chemical additives, is that it's a little bit tougher to mix it up and you will ultimately have to use more water to get the same fluidity, which, you know, creates a weaker mix. But that's okay. We're just doing this for show and tell. So this is gonna be a really fluid mix, maybe a little too fluid. So this was a 0.45 water cementitious ratio, or excuse me, I'm sorry, a 0.5 water cementitious ratio. And right away, you are going to see the difference in mixes. And while this mix is easier to get into the, um, the mold, it might cause some problems later on down the road. All right, so here we go. Bloop. Oh, and that just went in beautifully. Look at that, huh? So go ahead, give it a little tap, and boom. That's taken care of. So there's our two mixes. We're gonna let those sit. One thing that you can see that I'm doing, I come back and I take all that little bit of excess off as much as I can without really causing any wear and tear on it. Um, and I do that because normally that little bit of material that's left on there can be a localized site for cracking. All right, so we're done with that. Now, what happens when we're done with them? As you saw, it's really easy to pop these uh, cards out. You flip them over and you go ahead and pop them out and you have this beautiful card. What you're left over is a card that has a little bit of residue on it and you gotta make sure that you clean these out because if you don't, that residual will start blocking the lettering. And as you can see, we've got some really, really light lettering over here. So once we start getting material around those, we're gonna lose that right away. All right. So now, this is, uh, this is how we clean these bad boys, and it's really easy. You don't wanna put a lot of pressure on these, so we put them in this uh, vinegar water bath. 10% vinegar, 90% water, leave them in there for a few days, and then the material just comes off of them. And again, you don't really wanna scrub this stuff, because just like material getting on there, you're still losing that lettering. So once we get that vinegar in there, it's been soaking for a while, um, it's really easy to clean, and then of course, make sure you rinse them off you never want to get vinegar in your concrete it'll go ahead and just break down that concrete so really nice okay so the last thing I wanted to talk about before we headed out is the you know these things they are made of very thin plastic and if you don't make the right mix or if you don't clean them enough samples will be hard to take out and eventually they are going to break and that's just going to happen with these molds when we got these made, the setup fee was around $135. We got these made about a decade ago, or the original setup. We get four of these molds for, I believe, $5 to $10. Um, so we normally get another set of 50 of these every two years, every three years. And they, they last a pretty long time considering how much we use them. But again, we're very gentle with them and just be using them day in and day out, they eventually will start cracking. That's just the nature of the beast, the nature of the material that we work with and the unfortunate reality of working with thinner plastic. So you could take a step further and make an epoxy mold. We have done that with concrete throwing knives. When it comes to these business cards, we found that this is the best approach. So. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you had a good time. Let us know if you have any questions. Go Concrete! Beat Asphalt!